Hello everyone and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today, while we're still snowed in at the home office, I'm going to be talking to you all about the single-pair Ethernet standard. Now, if you're familiar with Ethernet, you know that Ethernet requires eight conductors, and that's used for TX differential pairs, RX differential pairs, and power and ground when you have PoE going on in your Ethernet interface. However, there is another Ethernet standard that only uses two wires. That is the single pair Ethernet standard. I'm going to run over that standard in this video and show you how you can use it in your next PCB. Make sure to hop into Alteam Designer and follow along because I'm going to show you where to find some of the important components in Altium Designer. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, let's just jump right in to a description of the single pair Ethernet standard. So single pair Ethernet refers to the use of Ethernet over just a pair of two wires. So you basically have two wires that provide up to one gigabit per second data rate, and that is TX and RX over a single pair of wires. Now you have a specialized connector for this that is not an RJ45 connector. So there is a standardized connector that is specified in a particular IEC standards. And I'll show an example connector here uh, later in the video. Now this does require magnetics termination and it does rely on media independent interface routing. Now that style of routing is described in a blog. So I'm gonna to link to that blog in the description so you can learn more about those different routing styles. Now, once the signal is injected onto the physical medium from the PHY interface, it has up to one kilometer distance that it can travel. And the standard is specified for up to 50 watts power delivery all over a single pair of wires. So this is pretty convenient for industrial applications that might require smaller form factor, maybe something a little more rugged than what can be done over a standard RJ45. And they don't require the huge data rates that you might see in like the data center or some of the more advanced embedded devices that are going onto the market now. So it's a very nice and convenient way to access Ethernet, and you don't necessarily need to have a bulky RJ45 jack to do it. What are some components that you can use to enable single pair Ethernet in your design? Let's just take a look here at Octopart. Now, one thing you could do is, of course, start searching for single pair Ethernet controller or single pair Ethernet Phi. What I've actually done is located one component from Microchip. I'm not going to make this a big endorsement of Microchip. We're going to discuss several different components in this video. But Microchip does have a pretty wide ranging portfolio for single pair Ethernet and specifically under this 802.3 CG standard. So one of those components, just as an example, is the LAN 8770. Now, if you just look at the title here, you would say, hey, this is a base T1 Ethernet transceiver. But this is a single port, single pair Ethernet transceiver. And this is actually the Phi chip. It does not include the media access control layer. So if we just get into the data sheet, we can actually see what the topology is here for this component with single pair ethernet. So here I'm inside of the data sheet for the LAN 8770. And we're looking at the system level block diagram. Now here on the left, we have our media access control for 10100 ethernet. And this could be built into an MCU. You could instantiate it in an FPGA. In fact, you could probably instantiate all of this IP in an FPGA if the vendor has it available or if you're a VHDL expert. But um, here the Mac is actually built into um, some microcontrollers. Now the Mac is then routed to the Phi, which is our LAN 8770, using a media independent interface standard. So again, check out the link in the description and you can read the blog on these different media independent interface standards. Now on the output side, we have 
transmit and receive negative and positive lines coming off of the phi and then going to a common mode choke. So these are differential pairs. And this differential pair, of course, needs to then be designed to a particular impedance standard. That impedance is 100 ohms. That routes into a common mode choke. And then we have our output differential pairs being routed to the connector. And then the connector then connects to a cable. The cable carries a signal over to the destination device. So pretty simple system level topology here. These components are not that difficult to use, especially something like LAN 8770, because it only has one port on it. Now, if we go over and look at the connector, so the connectors are pretty simple and they're not the same as RJ45, as you can see in this image from Mauser. This particular connector has through hole mounting. It only has two pins on it. As you can see, this shielding around it then needs to be connected to ground. So if you actually just copy this part number, go over to a dummy board in Altium Designer, you can actually locate that particular part. You'll see right here that this part is available for use in Altium and I can right click and place it. Of course, normally I would place it in the schematic, but just for this example, I'm placing it in the layout. And we even have the 3D model here for this component. And you can see right here what it looks like. So this component would normally be brought right up to the edge, and then you would have the edge of the board uh, right here next to the silk screen, and then you could plug your cable right into this jack. So that's how this would work in a PCB. Now, I mentioned earlier that the chip here, this LAN 8770, is just the phi layer. Where does the MAC layer come from? Well, the MAC layer comes from some other processor. And basically, this is the processor that is going to aggregate all the data that you then want to send out over your Ethernet link. So one example of a microcontroller that has a MAC layer built into it is the STM32. Everyone should be familiar with STM32. I think we've even done one example with it in an earlier video. But the STM32 has the Ethernet MAC layer built into it. And if you just search for Ethernet MAC here in the data sheet, you will actually see that there is a section specifically on uh, the Ethernet MAC. So it's a little bit farther down. This is important because if you actually look at some microcontrollers like the STM32 and you see that they have Ethernet, you actually need to check to see that it contains just the MAC or the MAC and the PHY. Now it actually says right here in this sentence, I can't really highlight it here on Octopart because the format is a little weird, but you can see right here in this sentence that the STM32 requires an external physical interface device to connect to the physical LAN bus, which would be the twisted pair, fiber, or whatever else. So that would be this type of chip, the LAN 8770. That's how you would access your Ethernet link, and that's how you would then connect to all of these other components that you see in this block diagram. Now, if you're gonna get started with a component like the STM32 and LAN 8770, how do you get the data from the microcontroller over to the transceiver? Well, in this case, you need to make sure that your microcontroller and the phi layer have the corresponding interfaces so that they can communicate. So, of course, that means that the MAC and the phi both have to support the same set of media independent interface standards. Here, if you look at the LAN 8770 block diagram, you'll see a list here, MII, RMII, and RGMII. So these are different variants of media independent interface standards. And not all microcontrollers are going to support all of these different interfaces. Here, they list these in this data sheet because this PHY obviously supports these three interfaces. And if you scroll up here to the family feature matrix, you can see here that there are actually two different part numbers. One of them supports the gigabit variant, RGMII, while the other one does not. The 8770M only supports MII and RMII. Now, if you go over here to the STM32, let's say that we wanted to use this microcontroller, 
we would then just need to check that the Phi layer that we want to use is going to be compatible by just checking to make sure that the STM32 does in fact support one of those two standards. So you can see here MII and RMII are both supported. So we could use this STM32 with either of these LAN 8770 part numbers. Generally, if you have a component like this STM32 that has an Ethernet MAC built into it, it's generally going to support MII. So that's kind of the base level Ethernet standard that it's going to support. And then it may support some higher level standards like RMII. So this is reduced media independent interface. Now, if you have an even more advanced component like a small FPGA or maybe an MPU, it may have one of the next higher up standards for media independent interface. And then it could connect to a faster version of one of these LAN 8770 chips. So remember, single pair ethernet goes all the way up to one gigabit per second. This particular transceiver is only 100 base T1, so it's only 100 megabits per second. So if you wanted to operate with a single pair Ethernet link up to 1 gigabit per second, you would need at least this gigabit RGMII support on both the microcontroller or the processor that you want to use and the transceiver that you want to use for your system. So make sure that you have that matchup when you are selecting components. Now, in an upcoming project, what we'll actually do is we will create a small PCB that uses this microcontroller with this transceiver and some other components to make a small module. And you guys will all be able to download that project just like the other projects that we've been working on. Just to get started, I already have my new project created in Altium Designer. I think most of this stuff I can just pull up from the manufacturer part search panel. So here I have the transceiver. Let's go ahead and grab the STM32. You can grab that part number next. And we'll go ahead and place this in the schematic. And then the next piece that we need is, of course, this connector. And the last piece that we're going to need is a magnetics termination circuit. If you're not sure, just look at that block diagram again. You'll see that there was a magnetics termination circuit there that we need to add in. And that's going to go between this TRXP TRXN pair and this connector over here. That's what we're going to do in an upcoming video. So make sure to keep track of all of our tutorials as they come out and you'll be able to watch that tutorial. Thanks for watching everybody. My hope is that this video shows you what you need to do in order to implement single pair ethernet in your next PCB. Make sure to follow some of the guidelines for component selection that we discussed here. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be showing a little demo in an upcoming video. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator folks. Yeah.